got to tell you, you know, Joe and I were talking at breakfast today. I'm super excited about launching something new. Mm -hmm. We're talking about land on the airwaves for, uh, hey, let us know if you can hear us and see us, by the way. Talking about land for what? Four years or more. <laughs> and I love land, but yeah. it's just fun to mix it up and, and uh, talk about it a little bit. So. so you can hear, but not see. All right. I'm not sure. Can everybody else see us? I have a couple of goods. We had an incredible uh, soft slash beta launch for House Academy for uh, Land Academy members only. So thank you. I mean, yeah. it, it worked. I didn't, I we never know what's going to happen with this stuff. There's a lot of front end time that we spend producing a lot of things and, and uh, marketing. And it's like all hands on deck for like 60 to 90 days, seriously. And, you know, there's always that, that I wonder, you know, you wonder in the back of your head, it's like, does anybody really care? These are all land people. And one of the things that Jill and I realized is that land people really understand houses mm -hmm. and house people could care less about land or, or they don't, I don't know what it, it's some version of that, but right. I'm going to turn this up. All right. Making sure that we have, I got a little bit of different things. If it's not, if you want to restart, jump back in and jump right, out, jump back be, in. It should be much better. Um, that okay, good. might make a difference. It was, it was, okay, on my, good. it was my end. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> cool. But yeah, we're super excited. It's so fun to talk about something different and share our experiences here because, you know, as you all know, I mean, you guys get it. I don't know if you guys had time to read the blog that we wrote today because it just went out like an hour ago, but I was really thinking about how different these two groups are and yeah. how special you are because you understand both. You know, it's, you know, like I said, in the thing, land people usually get houses, but house people really don't, don't really understand land. So having the, the experience and the knowledge behind you, you know, is, is game changing. When you walk into these house deals and you're like, God, I've already done 80 deals on my own. Yeah. You know, people go, what are you, what are you talking about? I'm like, look, I know how to do a deed. Let's, let's get to, you know, and people are like, wow, right. you know, you really understand the process. You know what, what's involved to get it recorded. You know, there's, you're, you have such a, uh, an advantage, you know, coming into this. So it's, and you know, for many of you who, if you're like us, it's, it's, it's a little bit uh, frustrating and comical when you watch, you probably do this too. If you ever spend time in bigger pockets, sometimes I'm like, oh no, no. You know, you, you see people and they, they don't understand some of these transaction basics and yeah. you guys have this. So this is now it's fun. I like houses. I mean, so like, yeah, for example, you know how to talk to a seller. Yeah. That puts you in a whole different league already. Yep. <clears throat> You're an investor. You know how to be an investor. You know how to talk to investors. Right. Because that's your buyers too, by the way. You know how to communicate with those guys, you know, and it's the greatest thing on the planet. Right. All you need to, and, and now with House Academy, you know where to find them. You have yeah. uh, some announcements and then I'm going to jump into some okay, national cool. statistics. Okay. Oh. I'm reading some of you guys' comments, know, so I'm sorry. I'm Go getting ahead, distracted, ahead, so that's good. So um, I was like, so Scott, so you did SFRs for years, and you got Land Academy, and you just closed your first land deal off your first mailer. Yay. Well, this is great. So maybe your years of SFRs, we are obviously um, that this is changing now how you find and buy, and heck, you don't have to do the renovations if you don't want to. As you know, that's not what we want to do, mm -hmm. just pass it on. So you probably have a bunch of, um, what's the word, uh, associates who are <laughs> now your buyers. Yeah. See, that's great. And now, yeah. isn't it great too? Knowing, you know, I know we're going to get into it more, but, um, I love, we just talked about on the first house Academy shows we did yesterday. Um, it takes, podcasts. yeah. So some, some of the guesswork is it's, it's not there with houses. It's so good. Okay. So here's my quick three. Hey, can you take a, before Joe oh. gets into it, can you take a quick second and, and, um, take the poll? Okay. The question is, have you completed an SFR flip? You know, option one, you can multiple choice option. looks like 14 people out of, uh, tw several have answered. Yes. I made money. Yes. I made money, but it sucked. <laughs> That's been my experience. <laughs> Not with the right deals, but the original renovation deals. That goes with a lot of things in your life. Yes, I've. <laughs> 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 yeah, 
Yes, I made money yeah. uh, on an SFR <laughs> deal, but I mean, yes, but I lost money. I've done, been there with that too. And no, I've not had a deal. So, so uh, far, we got nine out of 14 people have not done deals. So this is good. Awesome. Okay, you ready for my little <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so this is the, f- we, we, we heard you. We had already scheduled and started the show and picked this time slot. And uh, our team got to us and said, hold on, everybody. People are already having a little trouble fitting it in yeah, that time early. of day. So we're moving it to, we're moving it three hours later, starting next week. So right now it's 11 a.m. Pacific time. So just so you're ready and you'll see the invites change. So starting next week, we're going to try 2 p.m. Pacific time. So it's like right before the regular uh, Land Academy member. Same exact webinar number and you'll get notified. Yeah. Same webinar number and same, um, uh, same notifications and all that stuff. Nothing will change. It's just the show time. Okay. Um, then let's see here. Oh yeah. And if you have anybody who's, um, not a member of land Academy and they want to join house Academy, I'll just tell you right now, it's going to go live to the public on the 12th. So when's, I think it's Wednesday, Wednesday, the 12th, it's not on my announcement. So sorry, team. I just shared that. (laughs) So uh, you're probably like, knock it off. So there's going to be a lot of that. Yeah. They're going to be like, that's supposed to be a surprise. (laughs) So, and I am going to, I am going to do, am I doing a live thing that day? I don't even remember, Aaron. I don't know, but it's going to go to the public then. So you, you get to hear it before anybody else. Uh, oh yeah. And the newsletter came out today, as I mentioned, and I really like it. If you had not taken three minutes and 47 seconds or however long it is to watch the video, please do. Cause it's pretty darn funny. Uh, Daniel worked really hard on that and it is phenomenal. Did you watch the video? No, I haven't seen anything. All right, you got to watch it. You know, I'm always the last to know, as it should be. I'm not complaining. I, I can't wait to see it. Oh, good. Does, I, it's in my inbox. Team, like, does he I not get, get the newsletter? No, I get kidding. the newsletter. I just haven't done it yet. <laughs> okay. It's really good. You have to see it. It'll make you, it'll make you laugh. I write for the newsletter. Yeah. I provide the content. I just don't, you know. Anyway. Yeah. All right. And then the last thing is it starts tomorrow. Going through, uh, I think next Friday, is O2O is having a promotion. So it's 10% off of orders over 500 bucks. So watch your email tomorrow for the official announcement. Hopefully we're all sending at least 1,500 units, which is about what, 800, I did the math, $825, 10% off of that is nothing to sneeze at. That's well, a nice it's all dinner. of our profit. That's <laughs> good. So I am sneezing. That's, that's right. I'm sneezing pretty hard. Or Stephen said, "Oh, so it's a nonprofit O2O week." We're gonna have a nonprofit month for, in June <laughs> for O2O, which is fine. You know what? It's all right. <laughs> so this is your this is your chance. Blow it out. If you've got some stuff you want to do, get some big stuff out there um, from Friday to Friday. So that's my announcements. Thank you. Okay. Let's take a look at some national statistics uh, and these home flipping cycles from CoreLogic. And if you don't know this already, CoreLogic is um, CoreLogic is terrible at at marketing and advertising. They have so much great content. Uh, you know, I'm on their lists to get these. You know, they spend a lot of money on research and analysis and news, like real estate news and all kinds of stuff. They just don't distribute it. Joe and I had a pretty high level meeting there a couple of years ago, and and at the end of it, I said, okay, so what you're saying is you have a bunch of PhD, PhD candidates working here that know nothing about marketing. And they all looked at each other and said, yep, that's yeah. exactly right. So it's, we can only win that way if it's not, if it's all hidden and we know where to get it. So home flipping, uh, this schmo here who's dressed in a suit and I hope no, none of you He looks on this like call. a late night TV host. He looks like, what's his face? Well, he forced me to wear a suit. I hope none of you have a suit on because that's why we're part of this group. I hope you're dressed worse than this. Home flipping is uh, nearing all-time high cycles, but flippers are increasingly adding value, which is some version of what I've been saying yeah. forever. Take a look at this. Here's the flipping rates by quarter nationally. This is 2008. I hope you can see it. 2009. So flipping rates as a percentage of all the deals, you know, they, in 2005 and six at the top of the market, it it approached 11%, hit 11% and went back down to 5% during the downturn. And Oh, guess what? We're exactly where that is now. Even a little Uh, higher. Is that good? That's awesome. Or bad. We'll take a look at this. This chart coincides with 
this chart from a time standpoint, and it's flipping returns. So what are the annualized economic returns based on, you know, you spend $100,000 and if you make $100,000 on a deal, you get $200,000 back, that's 100%. So let's look. The lower the activity, the higher the profit margin. So everybody's constantly asking me, what do we do during the downturn? What's going to happen? Because we know a downturn's coming. Mm-hmm. Well, this, remember we did all those flips right here? And remember how much money we made mm-hmm. on the west side of Phoenix? Oh, yeah. You could pick up houses that were just, the prices didn't make sense. So the more people that are doing yeah. it, the less uh, annualized return there is. The less, mm-hmm. next, the less profit. And during a downturn, which we're about to go into, I believe, you know, people are making up to 100%, mm-hmm. which is our regular land transactions. So, and we're already all prepped for this. This is why you're the smartest people of, of all. Of all the Land Academy members, you're the smartest people. You join House Academy, you understand the basics, and you see some value in, in flipping houses or adding it to what you're doing from a land standpoint. And then it kind of planed out here. So you'll notice that there are these huge returns during this downturn. But before that, th- what I get out of this is that house flipping was not that popular from like in the early 2000s. And it's catching on a little bit. I should see when HGTV started. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, you're right. Right? It probably started right here. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> that's a good perception, Joe. Yeah. So I find it very interesting that I know. these return, when times are tough, returns get great. So, and I talk about that in the program. Buy side discount versus sell side premium. I take this to mean buy side discount is buying it under value. Oh, well, guess what? That's what we do versus sell side premium, marketing it up. Mm-hmm. Oh. See this buyer's discount? So in the last quarter of 2018, or this is 2018 right here, how much discount you're getting over the actual re- current value. Mm-hmm. That tells me this. Hey, if you want to go to this uh, and really dig into it deep, here's the... Wow, the spread. Here's the what link. it looks like, it's showing the, the spread of profit is getting bigger. That's exactly right. That's so... And cool. you know what? It's not the top side premium. No, they're still paying it, They're just buying it better. Yeah. People are learning how to buy it better. Yeah. That's what this is all about. Yeah. All this article does, in my opinion, and from a credible source, confirm what we talk about mm-hmm. in the program and all the time. You just got to follow through. Yep. So that's where I think the market is. I think it's all good news. I think we're headed into a pretty substantial recession between now and the end of the year. I think it's really going to begin. And I think it's a perfect time to launch House Academy and buy a bunch of houses. I love it. You know, I'm not, I have nothing to sell you guys because you're already sold. You're already, I'm just, really, I think this is what's happening. All right. I put together this little presentation. I'm going to talk a lot today, Jill. Thank you. And if you're good, thank you. I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what do you mean thank you I mean, thank you for your presentation <laughs> you put a lot together here i really I you know, did you hear how jill said that she said thank you that's jill's like on camera voice <gasps> and really what she meant by that and her voice intonation is oh no i haven't been paying attention to a damn word you've been saying and thanks because i don't have to do anything i did <laughs> i pointed out the spread got bigger i'm totally listening i'm actually taking notes <laughs> if you here's your notes one note my, my only note is wonder when hgtv did originate i will look that up later <laughs> if you if you're in a long-term committed relationship oh no like let's say a marriage oh no you can your spouse can say something like oh, yeah no. yep and you there's like 17 different ways to say yep in what they mean oh, okay <laughs> Here's a little presentation I put together about the differences between buying and selling houses and buying and selling land. And I put the presentation uh, together in the following. Pre-acquisition, acquisitions, engineering, and sales, and then what can really go wrong? Wow, Steve, every single time you put one of these together, it's the same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing. There's pre-acquisitions and three steps. I'm happy to entertain you. Today, it's Jill. kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. We are uh, both in houses and land using assessor data to create and implement an offer campaign, duh, 
same as LAN, with a few added steps for better accuracy. Why? Because there's more data available. Exactly. Acquisitions, this acquisition process is the same as LAN until you get the due diligence. And in my opinion, it's a lot easier. There's more information available. Right. Engineering, you can entirely eliminate the engineering process yeah. if you have a solid buyer list. And that doesn't take long. And you don't need a lot. We have customers, we're house customers in, in uh, two markets specifically, where I talked about this is a live event. Joe literally texts them mm -hmm. an APN, not even an address. Mm -hmm. They look it all up and they say yes or no. Mm -hmm. in, in one case, he types, it, ba types in back Y or N. Right. It can get like that. Exactly. Or would you take X? Or so, I'll give you, you know, watch for an email from me in two hours. Sure. Yeah. All right. Or don't send it out to the market yet because uh, give me my two guys, hours. Yeah, give me two hours. Give my me guys two hours. Um, what's the lockbox code? So, so that eliminates, you know, if you, and this is during the acquisition, right? Yeah. It's not like we haven't even bought it yet. So you now you in a transaction, you've entirely eliminated the engineering process and entirely eliminated sales. Mm -hmm. So, you see, yeah, you Steve, you only make ten or twenty or thirty thousand bucks on these deals. Versus, you know, sometimes 100, 150 on the bigger mm -hmm. land transactions, but it's so easy. Mm -hmm. Easy on you and your staff and the whole thing. So let's talk about pre acquisitions and like generating deal flow. It's the same as land with a few added steps. And here they are Data Tree, you'll notice you have a subscription with Data Tree with House Academy. We believe it's better, uh, a better source for SFRs over RealQuest. Why? Because there's mortgage balances, uh, there's mortgage balances, you know, that. The algorithms that DataTree pulls in versus RealQuest, are, there's multiple uh, APIs they're pulling in. Mortgage data, lien data, foreclosure data, uh, stuff that's real house specific. I still believe that RealQuest is the best source for land, and that may or may not change because it's more frequent. They, they pull um, in most cases. And it's just generally better for rural property because Re RealQuest, uh, in, in all their 1987 glory, treats all of these counties from a data perspective the same. Right. In data tree I've noticed is where there's more urban counties and more houses, they tend to favor those pretty hardcore. Uh, data tree is owned by First American Title, by the way. And interesting enough, interestingly enough, they started RealQuest and separated the companies in like 2004, I think. Something like that, yeah. She's, she's pulling on her hair like this. Nope. That, you know what that means? Are you happy with your hair today, Lauren? I'm fine. Right, Why? Good. <laughs> Mortgage balances are uh, involved in the data scrub. So there's a lot of methodologies. If you watch the House Academy program already or yet, I only currently send offers to uh, pro people who have no mortgage at all. Is that correct? Or does that yield the best uh, result? I haven't honestly experimented with uh, a lot of other ways regarding mor mortgage balances um, because we haven't had to. Our numbers are pretty close to 2,000 to one for every 2,000 letters. Actually, it's like closer to 1,800. But she and Jill and I, the more we get into this, and the, not the more that we get into this, the older that she and I get and the more experience that we have in doing these deals, the less crap we're willing to deal with. True. So, I mean, for instance, there was a house that we passed on that had a bunch of solar panels, so older solar panels on it. And it was a great deal and a great location. And the lady was really motivated to sell it. She and was. She, she was making payments every month. We backed out because of the contract and the transfer <laughs> and the solar panels. It's not that it couldn't be done, but it was just, it was just a little bit yeah. more hassle than we were willing to take on because I had three others sitting right there ready to go that were easy. So, yeah. yeah. We'll get to your questions. Uh, Jill, we'll get to your yeah. questions here and all of this stuff in, in uh, just will. a minute. Do we have our Q&A open? We don't. I do. Oh, well, I don't see it. It's just not open. Oh. Here, hold on. Good point. I'm not. Thank you. Now I see the oh, questions. okay. Okay, hold, please. So I see. So, so thank you. Now we're seeing your questions. And so I'm going to let him. He's on a roll. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to let him go. <laughs> and then we will circle back around. But keep, please keep adding your questions in. So thank you. So mortgage and balances are involved. Uh, the ownership scrubs must use here. Um, there's very few times that I scrub out any data at all for housing, uh, for house mailers, because, you know, it's not like scrubbing out the state of Arizona. When you could do a land scrub, the state of Arizona is in there. There's municipalities. There's a lot of scrubs. And I'm, that's not necessarily a bad thing. 
But when you do an SFR zip code based, who owns all these houses? Uh, data scrub. It's uh, if you scrub anything out, you know what you actually scrub out? Bad addresses. Once in a while, somebody will own a rental house and they're, they have an, a Canadian address because they live in Canada and they're a landlord and it's way different than the site of stress. You take that out, but that's about it. Uh, offer pricing is way more sophisticated um, and laser-like in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and if you've watched the program, you'll, the, now's not the time for me to go into why it's so much better, but man, you know, it comes back to this. This is how you price the offer. You, you attach a number to like, how much money do you want to make? Well, mm-hmm. I want to make $40,000 on this mailer. Oh no, I want to make 50,000 or I'm going to make 20,000. Yep. It's that simple because you have an algorithm that's generated by all these other professional companies to tell you how much the thing's worth. Yep. And then finally, uh, the O2O getting the offer in the camp in the, uh, getting the offer into the mail to the owners is the same, it, almost verbatim the same. What's different is, and substantially different is the actual template that you use. There's a little, a lot more emotion on the sell side with houses than there is with the land, I think, don't mm-hmm. you? Mm-hmm. You don't, oh, when you talk on to the buy, you mean the buy side? Well, when you talk to a seller, right. who owns some land, on the buy like, side, please, how fast can we close on this? Right. And the buyer and the sellers of SFRs are more like, well, thanks I, for calling, and I do want to sell, but um, I, my I, grandchildren have to go to grade school or or something. Right. Or they're like, um, "Well, um, that's not a good day because you know they're living there. Yeah. There's all kinds of little things that they want to do." Like, uh, I don't know if you want. I don't know if you, usually it's like a uh, who's coming over and yeah. and uh, I need to get ready so they can see this yep. kind of thing. And it's like, do I have to put makeup on for this stuff like that? <laughs> no, and. And Jen, you don't have. Oh, well, and some of them too. It's you haven't like, put makeup on in two months. Don't do it. How about you guys? Um, awesome numbers you guys are sharing. I'm going to get to all this stuff here in a minute. If it's but, appropriate to jump in here and break this up, that's fine. Okay, um, but often I seem like I get um, women. I'll tell you when you're on the buy side, having a couple or a woman involved really seems to help because I often find women um, involved in the transaction and they're uncomfortable if you're coming over. You know, they, they don't want to be alone when the inspector comes and things like that. So if you have a couple or a woman involved and can be there with her, that's very helpful. Just a little tip. Yeah. So that's just one of the reasons, you know, things that we've noticed how these are different and yeah. the seller's a little bit different. So So there's a string right yeah. now in the chat. This is uh, it great. started by Steve Fuller who said, you know, he's one for 1,860 letters. He's been doing it the last 18 months. And everybody's months. like, what the hell? Yeah. Things just got released. Well, here's a backstory on that. Not just with Steve, with with yeah. probably 25 members in our group that we know about. And Steve's one of them. You know, they took the concept, the Land Academy concept of sending offers to owners and made it their own and started buying houses. And that's one of the reasons that Jill and I sat down and said, all right, you know, we, maybe we should release something called House Academy and this is it. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of people in the group that have already been successfully doing this. We decided to share. Mm-hmm. 1860s, is great. Mm-hmm. That's about all you can hope for. Mm-hmm. I think that's the top of it. Yeah, that's amazing. So what's changed in the acquisition process? Not much, except for when you get to due diligence. The paper and the ownership review of the property is, is the same. Hey, does the guy that I'm talking to own it? Or did his dead father own it for nine years and he's just been living there and paying the taxes? Right. On and on and on. Same with land. Uh-huh. Uh, feasibility study. The financial feasibility study for, hey, I'm going to buy it for uh, 150000 bucks. I know it's worth two hundred. Same with land. The physical review of the assets, way more involved. With land, we don't... I look at a piece of land at this point, whether we're going to fund it for a member or whether we're going to buy it ourselves. And Joe and I say, does it have access to a county road? Oh, yeah. Does the financial piece of it work? Yep. Is we're it buildable? Is it like not gonna, like on the side of yeah. a cliff? Oh, we're going to buy it then. Yeah, that's kind of... I mean, it takes maybe 10 seconds for us to look at it. Right. If we do, if that. Right. If it gets to us because our people do it. So the physical at, uh, review for a house is way, way different. You or your transaction coordinator, you know, theoretically should manage the boots on the ground. Uh, and all of these three people should be the same in the beginning. Mm-hmm. So the BOG babysits the owner to their satisfaction throughout the transaction. And I mean, babysits. The last thing, because here's, can I jump in? Yeah, absolutely. Last thing you want to do is give them too much time because next thing you know, if you're not responsive, then they're shopping their offer and then, and then you might lose it. So. 
they'll call the guy that sent a letter or they'll just pick up the phone and just go, I saw, you know, a bandit sign. We buy ugly houses sign on the corner. I'm calling them. And all they, all they have to do, and they're fast, I'll tell you. Yeah. They are lickety split, to quote him, fast. They will be over there in an hour. They will offer $1,000 more than you, and they'll ask them to sign something. And we all know that that's not, they can get out of it, but the, the, in, the, in the seller's mind, it's a done deal. Even if you say, I would have given you $3,000 more, whatever, if you would have called me, they're like, oh, but I signed, and now it's gone. So you got to really time kills deals yeah. actually more in houses than, uh, than land than land. It's true. Yeah. BOG, by the way, does the same thing that, um, real estate agents are supposed to do. That's true. But they do it yeah. as your partner. Exactly. So now you're not giving away any fees. Yeah. BOG manages the physical, physical inspection that's required, by, uh, that's required by a licensed inspector required by, according to us, not required, required. Right. You want to do for that. a few hundred bucks. It's you get 400 a peace of mind. Four 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 fifty gives you a full like at least in the Arizona area, like on a two three hundred thousand dollar house, it costs four hundred roughly dollars, and it's um a full inspection including termite inspection. So yeah. and then you save that and you share that with all your buyers. <laughs> they turn the utilities on and off, and I swear to God. For some reason, it sounds stupid. Utilities are the biggest pain in the ass there ever was <laughs> for every single deal. There are all this utility discussion. They need a deposit. The, you know, it's like turning utilities yeah. on when you move. I mean, exactly. they don't show up. There's all kinds of stuff that goes on. You don't want to do, get, if you don't want to be bogged down after a few deals, you don't want right. to be bogged down with the stuff. Trust me. Right. They manage the locks box, uh, handoff keys and, and landscaping and all kinds of other stuff. This drive you nuts as an investor details. We have a question about boots on the ground too, about um, as a partner, as we're paying them a salary, salary per job, we pay them a flat rate out of escrow. So they kind of, we uh, treat them and talk to them and refer to them as if they're a partner in the deal, but their name's not on the deed. That's right. So. Uh, we have a contract with them right. and they get paid out of escrow. Mm -hmm. And when they, when the BOG goes to sit down with the seller, you know, and have a cup of coffee and convince them that we're going to buy the house and close on it quick, right. they refer to themselves as the buyers. Right. So the seller believes that that's who's buying, that's who's the behind all this. Right. And so, cause you don't want to do it. I mean, Jill might have something to say about this. You don't want them to go in and, and make it complicated for the seller. Correct. And you don't want a phone call from the seller. Right. Trust me, you as the investor, they don't want it to get that far up the food chain right? after you've got your feet wet. Right. The transaction coordinator uh, manages title and or, uh, uh, title escrow or lawyers to mm -hmm. purchase a deal, same as land. Here's what's different. Or maybe it's not for you. I don't know. It is for us. While this is all happening, all of this on the screen here, what you should be doing as the investor is making sure this asset gets sold is within minutes of when you buy it. Yeah. That's the real, you add huge value to doing a mailer as an investor and you add huge value to staying organized and making sure this pr property gets sold. The transaction coordinator is going to watch you do this on the first few deals and then they'll, get, they'll eventually just do it themselves. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of problems with this in the past and we've rectified it. The traditional way that everybody seems to blindly accept and it's totally wrong is, uh, I'm going to put an offer in this. I'm going to smoke a cigarette, maybe have a cup of coffee, wait around. Let's see what the, uh, they say. It comes back. We go back and forth on the price and, and then it just, it goes sideways from there. Right. You just, you have to hammer these things through yeah. as, a tr as a, uh, an investor and a transaction coordinator and just push it through while all the time, while the BOG is presenting this beautiful presentation about, you know, Mrs. Smith, I know you, would you like me to clean out your, help you clean out your garage? All the while you're just jamming it in the back. So the huge value that you can bring is on the front end pre-acquisition data scrub and on the, and making sure that your buyers who are professional real estate people are going to show up and, and right. perform. Like we said earlier, engineering can be an entirely uh, eliminated, unlike land. Engineering is much less time consuming than land. It's much uh, more, you know, there's much more information about houses than there is about land, especially real vacant land or even infill lots. 
chances are it's been listed in the past, so it's in the MLS. So if you look up the actual address in both of the county GIS or the county website, Assessor Treasure, and you look up the actual thing on Realtor.com or Redfin or wherever, or if you have access to the MLS, you know, you're going to find a past listing. This is what real estate agents do. They go find a past listing and copy it all and just make sure it's updated, if that, if they actually even do that. It's easier to get local current pictures of, on Google Street. You can't do that with land most of the time. And you, uh, it's so easy to hire a photographer. There's, there's oh, yeah. for 50, you know, 50, 80 bucks, you can get somebody to take some great shots like that day. Exactly. I just Google that too. It's really easy. And I just, at this point, I, you know, it's maybe they just moved out. They're about, you know, and I can send them in there. The house is empty. It's like, just let them go. I don't have to be there or the boots on the ground. I'll meet them. Yeah. If it needs to be that. Sales. Some, oh, go, go ahead, Joe. I mean, no, go ahead. Let's finish too. Cause we're gonna have a lot of different, there's a bunch of different right. um, random questions here. So these are all good great. turnout. Yeah. Yeah. Sales <clears throat> entirely eliminated. You can entirely eliminate this if uh, not on your first few deals, in, our, in my opinion. Sales happen when you buy the property. If you're buying a house, a $200,000 house for $160,000, you're in the driver's seat. And again, that's current. I want to stress something that's in its current condition. A flipper's going to come in, put 60 into it, and sell it for 320 or 350 or something. You're going to reset like the top that. of the market for you to go buy more wholesale that's deals in there. That's what they want to do. So that's the point when we're talking these numbers. Thank you. People talk yeah. about ARV, which is after yeah. repair value. I'm making a personal request of all of you now. Leave that out of your vocabulary. Yeah. In fact, don't even let it enter your head anymore. Who the hell are we as right. wholesalers to really understand what ARV is? Right. How could we presume to understand even renovating a house? And do, why would we want to? Well, and I think... ARV is a floating number. My ARV, because yeah. I'm going to do this to it, is different than your ARV because you're just going to do that to it. You've ever yeah. seen the vast majority of people, yeah. especially on HGTV, on these shows that walk into a house, what's the first thing they do? Oh, I love this wallpaper. Look at this light fixture. <laughs> Can you believe how these drawers open in the kitchen <clears throat> and they don't slam themselves closed? Well, that's not the business that we're in. That's the business that a renovator's in. <laughs> that drives me freaking nuts. When, okay. You know, oh gosh, I love that fixture. We should buy, we should spend $480,000 on this house. This wallpaper is great. Stupid. Okay. <laughs> How are you doing today? <laughs> Our job is square footage and math. Yeah. Well, again, that's why everybody here, you know what? Everybody here knows how to look yeah, at, that's why you know how to look at property like a line item. And this is the exact same thing. Exactly. So. Mm-hmm. Buyers are, uh, you know, a lot, the vast majority of your buyers already own a house in the market or they're renovating one right now. So you already paid for it and downloaded the original data set, yeah. separate the LLCs out. That's who's going to buy your house. Yeah. This is imperative in my opinion. I hope Jill backs me up here. I put this in the program. You have to own, op, hold an open house for the first few in a market, if not all of them. You know, we hold an open house for every property still. It's four hours uh, out of the BOG's life. We, they, the BOG fixed price lists it on the MLS and, and you sit there with a sign in and you sign in Collect every single all person your buyers. and make sure it's a, uh, investors only open house. You don't want Sally and her five kids walking through there They'll checking come. to see if They will come but checking to see if, you know, it's got enough bedrooms and where they're going to put their kids. Right. That's not the kind of deal. Or the next door do. neighbor. They will come. She came up with this driving for dumpsters, dumpsters concept, which I think is brilliant. I mean, that's really cutting to the chase. If there's 10 dumpsters in a, in a little subdivision and you just bought a house, one of those people is going to buy your house. That happened. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And they'll come. It's fun. These open houses, like the, when we go into a new market, we'll come to them. I like to meet these guys and, and you know, and uh, they'll bring a team with them. You'll have, you know, three guys all show up. It's the contractor and the money guy and the broker, whatever it is. They're all there together because they've been doing this for a while. Every open house that we sold, we only have held one and the property sold that day. Right. That yeah. day. That's it. That's, that's, you know why too, by the way, this, remember, this is not retail. This is stuff that needs work. The retail is a whole different ball game and we could talk about that on another, another time. You know what else I learned? Because yeah. I went to one of these open houses and talked to people and asked a lot of questions. For whatever reason, A... 
there's a lot of people that renovate houses that don't believe the deal is real unless it's in the MLS. True. I don't know why, but that's just what it's they think. True. We've tested it. Trust me. <laughs> Number two, for whatever reason, it's a call to action sense of urgency for yeah. them. Because if you post the property in the MLS on Friday and you have an, a Saturday open house, mm. they feel like they have to make a decision that day, right. which only benefits all of us. Right. Is it a pain in the ass? Yep. <laughs> it's cheap though. And finally, uh, this group of renovators slash landlords, for whatever reason, they hate email and don't really respond to texts, but, if, and they will, but they will answer their phone. I think it's because they're own, their own property managers or who knows why. I just hit them all three ways. They just, they just love to all. talk. Or send them a text. Like, like, usually it's email. Usually I'm email, phone call, text, something like that. I can't remember, but yeah, you'll see. Yeah. We're okay on time. Okay. So what can go wrong? I can tell you the mistakes that we've made, and I can tell you the, the mistakes I've, see, I've seen uh, our colleagues, not necessarily House Academy members, but other people in this business over the years, like Dennis. Mm -hmm. They all center, center around marking the house up too much. True. You know, we just came off of a $70,000 profit margin house that we owned for eight months, I think. Because it was retail. And I, that, I, that sucks on my soul. Yeah. It, it, the bottom line was the flippers didn't see the value in it. They walked in there like it doesn't need anything. Yeah. So they didn't they didn't get it. So we were stuck with a retail transaction. We did. Too we well. are not retail. Jill and I did too well on the acquisition side <laughs> to wholesale it. And it, and, it, and you're sitting there staring at the asset, going, "Man, we, we, we can't sell it for this little because it's like move-in ready." Exactly. So there's nothing wrong with rolling in a retail house or two in your whole thing if the house is ready to go. Yeah. Uh, just be ready. Just, just be ready. To, it's going to take some time. Exactly. And you're going to, it's going to be a whole, it's kind of fun to see too. That might help you make some decisions because now you got agents calling and they want to get all in. Yeah. It's a whole different yeah. thing. And you're going to go, you might do like we did where, you know, unless it's smoke and deal, even now I'm still might pass on it. Cause I'm like, shucks, I don't want to yeah. deal with that. Yeah. Well, you know what I would do? I'd still do that deal all over again. I just would take myself and you entirely and completely out of the transaction discussion loop. Right. It was harder too, by the way. This one, I'll, I'll tell you, our BOG didn't, didn't really know what to do too. They were all used to those other transactions. They didn't know how to deal with um, agents um, and, these, and the retail people. So I actually had to get involved on the, yeah. on the end of this last one. And that's bad. I know. When mom gets involved at that level, it's not good for anyone. <laughs> well, it is good because mom got it done. <laughs> well, it's just good for yeah, me. Yeah, I got not good it for done. It was, it was, you uh, know what happened? We had a I transaction. Had to... At the beginning of the deal, we had a transaction coordinator yeah. and a BOG. In the middle of the deal, a transaction coordinator bailed. So Jill had to step in. It, it was the same BOG. And we've got great BOG in this market. Right. They just, they're not, they're, one of their skill sets is not to like yep. ram the deal through. They're not deal makers. They're right. kind of like ba really good babysitters. Right. I had four people to call. The first one I sold it to, and it was like, a, what do we have to do to get this done? Right. That was it. This is the last slide. Okay. Good, because there's a lot of good questions. I know. Wholesale, right. I didn't expect this on the first. I know. I, I, I put this all I together because I thought there were going to be like six people on the call, and everybody's just going to say, entertain us, entertain us. No, we have a lot of happens, questions. And everybody's yeah. set up. Wholesalers, if you don't know it already, the word wholesale right now, I just learned this recently, is like really a negative name, negative term. People in the investment world are like, oh, freaking wholesaler. <laughs> he got there. What they're saying is that guy got there first. Yeah. Damn, I didn't get there first. Sure. Why do they have a bad name? It all comes back to this. They're marking the house up too much. Mm. And where they're optioning it, you know, if you're going to do an option deal with somebody where there's nothing wrong with that, just charge them five grand mm -hmm. and just keep the machine moving. But you can't do an option deal, expect to go to a, every, and get paid out of escrow and make $50,000. That's insane. You're going to alienate everybody or whatever the numbers end up being. Mm -hmm. Find your Zen in, in each market. In Southern California, 50 is probably okay. Mm -hmm. In Phoenix, I'll tell you, anything more than five or 10 is you're asking for it. Retailing the house with the carpet paint renovation, we just talked about that. That's what can go wrong. Mm -hmm. Take it from us. And finally... Here's a couple of tips on reducing your risk on every deal. Get a pre-inspection. Get an inspection before they close the deal. Make that inspection available right in the MLS as an attachment. Make it and make sure everybody knows about it. We've done deals where we did an inspection. It came out great, attached it, and no one's used to seeing it. 
Mm-hmm. So they order their own inspections. Yeah. And they're out which, there spending their own money. I'm like, what are you guys doing? Which is fine. Yeah. It just adds they didn't a, a know. week to the deal. Yeah. They didn't know. I'm like, I can help you here. And we do it pretty much the day that our BOG is sitting with Mr. and Mrs. Smith and they're signing and getting the, the, the official PA if we don't already have it. That's when they're saying, and does Tuesday work for our inspect, your inspector? Great. We'll have them here on Tuesday. It's at that same time. Because they're just working their way down a list. And, they're getting, and they get the ball rolling. No, but it's, you need that. It's by A, you need it right away. And B, it gives the seller too, it, the transaction is happening. There's a psychological reason too. They're, they're coming for the inspection. Right. So, and you want, you want to know quick because then after Tuesday, if you find something awful, you might want to go, never mind, you know? So, thank you. If there's any one thing that could make you successful overnight at this and re- re- dramatically reduce your risk is working with uh, people in the real estate field that are pros and that you get along with. Mm-hmm. On the paper side, you've got you got your closing team. Like we have a in a market in Phoenix, we have just found after like ten escrow agents, she found one, and they just sing to each other. I mean, they get stuff done. It's crazy. It's actually we should record that. Mm-hmm. Oh you guys yeah, do really well. We together. do great. So I send her treats. That uh, and and then the same thing with the asset side. If you if you got uh, maybe three to five people, really in a lot of cases it's yeah. just one, it's one nice. or two. That you really love and they like, get you yep, and they're cool oh, and they're nice. That, you know, now there's nobody suing each other. You're not yeah. dealing with end users. Nobody, they don't, they do their own inspections or they just have a guy. A lot of the, the people that we work with in some markets, they just have a guy that goes out there and says, yeah, nothing's falling down. Well, and they, and they don't want to do this. What's nice too is you have such a nice relationship. Like I've taught this one buyer that we have and I'm like, why, you know what I do. Why don't you do this? Because you know what? I don't like to. I like our relationship. I like the creative side of this. I'm like, okay, got it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And finally, above all, same thing with land. Just don't pay too much. Mm-hmm. For some reason, there's a propensity to pay too much for houses. For some reason, or see right. something that's not there. Um, more than land. Yep. I don't. I don't. Maybe that's just us. I don't know. Maybe. Do you all want right. to jump to yeah, the? Let's you, jump what, to the Q and A. Why don't you take control of this? Okay. All right. Fun. I'm going to answer all the questions all right. you guys have in here, and then I'll then I'll jump back and get okay. in the chat. If there's anything in here. Okay. So, hey, Abby. It says hi, Stephen Jill. I want to start by thank you guys for releasing House Academy. I went through the whole training in one sitting. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> it's very well done, especially the mail merge and pricing module. Please keep up the good work. Awesome. Actually, I move a second seat over here. There we go. Uh, I joined Land Academy eight months ago. I've sent around 23,000, good job, uh, offer letters, bought 67 properties and sold around 34 so far. It's great. After going through House Academy training, I felt confident and hope I can replicate similar success I'm with sure you houses can. as well. So good. Since all the land pulses I bought were using my own cash, my only concern is I have is in regards to financing. How easy is it to secure financing for houses in the three to five hundred thousand dollar range? Any tips to increase the odds of getting funded quickly? Thanks. We've Abby. never gotten turned down. Uh, there's yeah. multiple. We only work with members in, in the Land Academy group to buy these houses, and we've never. They don't even check anymore. So, how hard is it for you? Um, this transaction history goes a long way to make for yeah. with me. So, I don't think it's going to be hard for you at all. Um, They're in our group. They're in our group. Um, house tank is not done, but while we're working on house tank, I believe there's a house version of deal board and that's where you're going to find them right now. Or put it on land tank for now. Yeah. Or even, even, or you could just do the land Academy deal board too. I'm looking for my team to weigh in on this and tell me, but I think we have a deal board there while we're working on house tank. So, house tank's coming. Yeah. Heck send it to us and we'll find you guys. Yeah. You know, if you I really, mean, if you have it's like, it's gotta be a good deal. Yeah. If it's a great deal, like we got to do this, you know, can you hook me up with somebody? Here's a, not a, here's a, uh, a deal that we're oh, going to let. Yep. The house, the housing deal board is up and running. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you Aaron. Here's a deal that we, we wouldn't do or wouldn't even work on the algorithms. Uh, cause I'm gonna look at the same thing that, that you did. The algorithms for the, the asset average $200,000 and you're buying it for 185. 15,000 bucks is not enough of a spread. Correct. Same deal. Algorithms value the asset at 200,000, but you got it in for 150, 155. There's $50,000 worth of spread for, to all go around. Yeah. Thanks. We're going I'm going to take that seriously. Okay. Scott asks, how do I find the o, how do I find the cost for O2O on help with filling prices in my mailer? Oh, I would like to either pay O2O or do that with a VA. 
Oh, it's on um, offers to owners. Can I show it on here? Do you want to go sure. show it in there? I'm, I'm, yeah. I understand the question. Can it's explain? it's your um, special pricing service. Smart pricing. Excuse oh, me. Oh, smart pricing. Smart yeah. pricing. Thank Good. you, Abby. Abby put it in here. It's 15 cents. It's 15 cents. Okay, yeah. But if you go to offers to owners, there should be a thing at the top there that says smart pricing service. Um, I think it's right there under orders, products, order. Go to, on the left, products, order. Um, keep going down, smart pricing service. There's not an image there. I know it's coming. They're fin finishing that up. So thanks. There you go. He's dying. That's all I needed. Hey, Aaron, uh, our Aaron. Oh, you have to log in. Oh, we have to log in. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'm not logged in. You're Never good. mind. Okay, cool. So if you're a housekeeper member, log in, and then you can get the price, smart pricing service. So good job. It's 15 cents a line. Mm -hmm. Steve said, for pricing houses, rather than discounting by a fixed amount to create the desired equity or using dollar per square foot, why not offer a percentage of the average algorithm value, say 75%? Would that be a bad idea for some reason? No. no, and that's in there. If you look in Steven's um, spreadsheet example, when he has all the numbers in there, the percent, you could drop it by a percentage. I think you have it in there. Well, you? there's not a column built in. Oh, okay, I thought you did. Um, and the very original ones. Maybe that's what I was. remember. There's you like, were looking at you know why, Steve? 60% of value or do I want to just make $30,000? You know, when, I, when I create these systems, yeah. I have choices to make about, you know, for my personal the way that I, I have like nine ways to look at the asset and variances. And if you were at the live event last time, you saw that. But I chose to go with square footage and a uh, hard dollar amount as a teaching mechanism. If I put nine ways in there, it's, it's going to, our customer service staff is already like overdone, overworked. That's why. As a percentage, have at it. It's easy to calculate. Does it make sense to hire a real estate agent for boots on the ground? Let me talk about this for just a second because we almost... We have differing opinions on this. Right. Um, most of them don't want to do that job. They want more because we have talked to them. Um, I don't know if you remember the story of the guy on the first floor in our building here <laughs> who started, who came up and sat at my desk a couple times in a row and started sending out mail and goes, oh my gosh, this works. He's an agent. But, and we've talked to him about doing different things. And as far as boots on the ground, there's not enough in the spread end for him. He doesn't want to do that. He wants to be at the level that we are at. Now, are there agents out there? Possibly, possibly, but it's hard for them. I think it's hard for an agent to take their, to change hats like that. So I'm not a fan. I'm, I mean, even I'll tell you right now, um, you may or you probably didn't see this, but I'm, I'm hiring hardcore for an in-house transaction corner right now. I need more help. And one of the things I said on there is I really do not want an agent. I want, I love someone with escrow experience all day long, but I do not want a licensed agent. They don't, they don't see it the way we see it. Do you have anything you want to add? I think that um, it's possible, but you're gonna have to work at it pretty hard. But once you get that person, they're going to do a few deals with you and then not become a real estate agent any longer. So I hope that's, that would be yeah. the goal. So it depends on the, it depends, really depends on the individual. Yeah, I would look at, uh, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm skipping ahead. That's okay. Steve Fuller, would I do this? Would I look at this deal? Yeah, I would. What is the, what is the, all the averages come out to? It's probably at least. Well, it gets me thinking. I think thousand dollars in the spread. We should have a, a module in parcel fact 3.0, maybe 4.0 that where you look this up just like this and it pulls up, it I, APIs all the right there for you. Oh yeah. So that's, and it's not that hard. Yeah. Would I look at this, Steve? Hell yeah, I would. Oh, the average is 3.7. Yeah. Oh. I mean, well, I mean nuts not to really take that seriously. I don't know. Is $700,000 <laughs> enough to split? Let's think. Well, and then sell it for 3.5 yeah. or 3.4. Right. Or two. Yeah. Just move it quick. I like that too. This All is right. the kind of crap that we have to get used to. And I don't mean crap. I mean awesomeness. <laughs> the kind of awesomeness. I mean, you could make $700,000 on this deal. Right. Exactly. All right. Nick says, on the red green, well, that's, that was what, what, I'll tell you, that's what started on the guy down in the basement, or not the basement, on the red <laughs> column, first floor. 
Here. No, I think you mentally think he's in the basement. I do. Kind of think that. <laughs> anyway, we're in the penthouse and he's in the basement. Just kidding. It's not what I, not what I mean. But no, he acts. He said, "I don't know what just happened, but I made a hundred thousand yeah. dollars." And his first deal. Yeah, I was like, bought it for eight hundred thousand dollars, sold it for nine hundred thousand dollars because somebody they fixed it up and sold it for one point two, because that's torrents, you know, kind of thing. Those are the regular numbers. And he's like. I didn't know that was possible. I want every one of you on this call to remember this call. This is the first House Academy call. Three months from now, we're going to be looking at multi-million dollar assets and people are going to be reporting back saying, just what Jill said, I made a quarter of a million dollars in this house quickly. Yeah. Seriously. What just happened? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. Nick Sliger says on the, we're going to see you in October. I hope again, right, Nick? On the red, green, yellow test, uh, Green indicates a market where the home will sell fast. When looking for a home for yourself, we've talked about that. I've mean, I got a lot to say. I about have this. Lot to say. Anyway, should I be looking? Uh, should I be looking at the red zip codes as well? Might red indicate a good market to buy, <laughs> and where a lower price might be accepted because the house is not moving so fast? Here's my point on this one, Nick. There's going to be things for your own personal thing. There's areas that you like and you don't like. There's school districts for people with kids that like and they don't like. There's just neighborhoods you go, we don't go south of Thomas. You know, things like that come up, you know. So in in this scenario, for and for we do this personally too, and I've told them right now, we're, you know, for the next uh, location for us, I have said, Stephen, would you please go do your magic? And yeah. when you passes all your tests, right? And I put in what I like area-wise and zip code-wise and just things, my attributes that I would like. It's really about location. So come to me with your top three and then let me pick from those three. So you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna change the criteria a little bit based on what you're um, willing to accept because it is, now it's emotional. You know, it's, you know how it is. It's true. You're going to win emotionally or financially. You rarely get both. So when it's your primary residence or something for you, it, there's some emotion there. Jill and I have never yeah. lived in a green test area. Uh, we currently live in a triple red test area in Arizona. <laughs> we live in a triple red test area and we own a house in Scottsdale in a triple red test area. Why? <laughs> because it's crazy, stupid, expensive. That's where she wants to live, which you, it almost all, always automatically means the days on market are like a year. <laughs> And on and on. So, Nick, to answer directly answer your question, throw away the red, red, yellow, green test, and whoever your partner is at the time, just check with them first and mail that. And send out, but still, nothing, you know. But I would still send out those good offers. You know, it's not going to. And send out those good offers. Yeah. You know what, Nick? And plan on it taking a little time on this one. You're not going to pick. You know, you're you're really going to find the ones you like. Sorry. So, Joe. good. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Cool. All right. So how do we go about finding and developing boots on the ground? So, okay. Boots on the ground. Uh, we started with, with friends. Yep. I'll tell you, I've, I've never done a boots on the ground that I didn't have a personal relationship with them slash. And, and, and to follow that up with, that is why we have talked about this within land Academy for a long time because, and there's two, I'm looking to see if they're on this call right now in Portland. I don't see the name right now, but anyway, um, we have, to, we have talked to different couples about when we're ready to branch out in different cities of land academy members. Yeah. I need someone with a little bit of established relationship um, because there's so much trust involved. You know, I mean, so I haven't, I haven't, I'm sure there's a good way and we'll get there, you know, with coming in cold. But even, I'll tell you, even the kid downstairs, you know, we were talking yeah. to him about being goots on the ground. I already have a relationship with him. I haven't done a deal with him. But, hey, it's not a hard sell. Know, yeah. You want to make uh, 10 to 20% of the net margin on the deal. You know, you don't have to put any cash in, but you do have to babysit. You have to be available. The thing with the boots on the yep. ground is it's hard to work with boots on the ground who have full-time jobs. It's true. Who can't take a call. It's true. Because, you know, I've always said like my ideal boots on the ground would be two retired people. The guy is a retired cop from the East, East Coast. And the woman is like um, a retired specific. financial advisor. Who likes to bake. <laughs> <laughs> Who's good with paperwork and shuffling and stuff. And uh, so they both go in there and he's like immediately cleaning the garage off for the old lady. Well, and she's baking and cookies. And she's baking cookies and, and identifying with her and shoving paper through. 
Yeah. And she's not afraid to yell at a title agent and stuff. That's so that's that's, that's I always really said that. important. We have a younger version of that actually. We gotta do. You're hilarious. <laughs> Hates golf, loves this. Like what? <laughs> All right. I bet no no one on this call golfs. I bet. That's hilarious. I bet it's too slow for everyone. Oh my gosh. East Coast PD, I love it. Okay, this is so good, you guys. Okay, Steve said, I'm confused about pricing from video six. I'm missing something here. In the video you showed, discounting the average algorithm by thirty dollars to $50,000 as an example. At first, it sounds like that's what I'm making, or at least the equity I'll be sharing with the money partner, BOG, et cetera. Correct. But if I get it for thirty dollars below the average algorithm value, that means I'm selling the investor for how much? Um, I tried... Ah, I tried to sell it for $30,000. If I tried to sell it for $30,000 more, now I'm selling it essentially for retail market value, right? Obviously, an investor isn't going to pay retail. How much do I really need to discount from the average algorithm value? And how much can I mark it up from there to the investor in order right. to leave enough equity for the investor to want the deal? I'm not sure for some the market value an investor needs in order to be interested Oh, my question is clear enough. Thank you. That was a great question. The sil- yeah, it is. Uh, the silver bullet answer is, see, here's why. If you take a million dollar house, this is why, you know, the, what the other question was about percentage. This is a different way to ask that same question. Why can't you just take a percentage of, of the algorithm value? On a, this house here that we're looking at, it's $3 million. If I say, you know, you want to buy for 75%, you're never going to buy this house for $2 million. Right. That's 75% of this. Right. In Phoenix, for on a two hundred thousand dollar house, seventy five percent of that is you know, whatever one hundred and eight sixty seventy thousand dollars, so which is very reasonable. Right. So it has to do with market specific stuff. In your exact case, in the thirty to fifty thousand dollar reduce it, what your your what's causing the confusion is that you think retail is the algorithm value, and it's not. That's the actual value of the home in its per, per, uh, current condition. Right. So you would, in a thirty thousand dollar case, you would probably make fifteen grand on it, and the person that you're selling it to, who's the person who's going to renovate it or rent it out, right. is getting a slight discount. The person who is going to renovate it. Is gonna is looking at and that's be on a two hundred dollar house in Phoenix. You know, we sold a house in Phoenix in Scottsdale. Right. For two hundred and we bought it for two hundred and sold it for two forty, I think. Right. And it's listed for sale for five hundred right now because mm-hmm. it's out. She did it all and cleaned it. And it's ready for the magazine. Right. So there's huge juice for the magazine people. Right. The uh, HGTV people. If we sold that property to a landlord, um, we probably would have made less. Right. So this isn't, yeah, if this it. was a push a button and get it all calculated out and, and print out money, then everybody would do it. So that's a great question. Do you know what's funny about that? Fantastic too, question. I like that too, Steve. I'm thinking, that's one thing I didn't go back and look at. I need to go back and look at some of my past transactions and see where the average was. I didn't, I don't remember where we bought it for and what we sold it for, you know, how close, how far under it was of the average that we're talking about. I didn't either. I, I just know, know I want to want to get out of it. I know we were south of that. I know we're like, so say this this three and a half million dollar house here, right? It's valued at three and a half million and see if would you say three seven, whatever. We're just gonna go with three five. Well, I pick it up yeah. for three and I sell it for three point three. That's a home run stand up. Nobody park, can argue with that. Out of park home run. And it's really, and by the way, every other every other home in that neighborhood right now is going for five million or four million. Who right. knows? Because because they've all been, you know, the next door neighbor was sold for four, the next one down, because it's more square footage. You know, whatever we all know the price per square foot when it's all done. So what is this one? Out of curiosity. It's big. It's fifty eight hundred feet. I was looking at the I like to see that. You know it's not listed, so a lot of the information is missing. That's funny. I mean, you can look at that. That's a good, that's good. Look at this. I love these numbers, by the way. Sold for 320. I look at this, by the way. I don't. So look at this, by the We just did have recorded a podcast on this. This is what I look at. He does it. And this was what makes me happy. Let's all think about this for a second. The person sitting in that home bought it in 1983 for $320,000. This is the last recorded thing, right? If this, if you check it out and you can, because you have access to all that with Title Pro, and now they're listing it for 
If you come in hot, you know what I mean? There we go. $600 a square foot. If you, come in, if you come in hot and you're cash and you're going a good price and you, you are that guy and you, you, you have the track record, whatever. Look, anything, anything north of a million they're happy yeah. with, you know? They're not they're and they're just kind of guessing. They're only telling what this agent or whoever it is told them to sell it for. They don't know. They paid three hundred twenty thousand dollars for it, so it's crazy. Okay. Hey, just, marketing staff, nice work that you got the Land Academy <laughs> as advertising on Realtor. Good All right, work. Abby said on the red, green, yellow task. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. I'm gonna try to get through these here, and I'll, I'll see if there's any. Or if there's any good last questions in the chat that I missed, quickly throw them in the Q and A, and we'll hit them. So thank you. I didn't you. expect this at all yeah. today, did you? I did. <laughs> I kind of did. You protect all this stuff. I you, did. You totally predict it correctly. I Every do. single time. And I still, like, no, Joe's probably wrong. Steve was like, there's going to be three people and there's going to be nothing to talk about. I'm like, yep. no, no, no. You don't know these guys. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right. Abby says, on the red, green, yellow test, does the new list to sold and parcels on market to all really matter if the days on market is super low, say less than 15 days? My, here's my answer. Mm -hmm. No. I think that DOM, days on market, is the great end all equalizer of all. However, I'll say this. It concerns me as a former accountant and a fan of uh, math to rely on one statistic from one source. So if you can get accurate DOM on a given uh, zip code from like three or four sources, like say, let's say Redfin, and then on top of that, Realtor.com, and then on top of that, I don't know, some like the assessor. And it all says, oh yeah, 15, 18, 17. And those are, that's truly the DOM there. Have at it. Mm -hmm. Days on market is the great equalizer of all. If it's real. Yep. That's perfect. Um, I'm looking at a question in the chat. I don't know if should we start to close a home? Does it matter how hot the home market is? I don't know what that is. Well, realtor.com, the data, I know what they're getting at. Realtor.com does this thing called market hotness. And right. uh, it's what Abby just said. It really is what it's these on market and all kinds of, like the hottest market right now, if you go on realtor.com or last time I looked at it was Cleveland. Oh, you yeah. want to buy and sell houses in Cleveland? I don't. So market hotness yeah. is not for us. That's for the HGTV crowd. Exactly. Um, looking to see if we have any more, any more things you guys want to, let's see. If we start in our home market. Uh, I, th I think okay. if you're brand new at this, it's always makes sense. I say this in the program to start where you live. Mm -hmm. You know, you go block by block and say, oh, these houses are way more than this block over mm -hmm. here. Exactly. Awesome. Well, that was we kept, great. We kept it till we did you know, one hour. So, and I want to keep, I want it because some of these people may have to like maybe get some work done before <laughs> they come back in a couple hours. <laughs> so, um, new list to solar. Well, we already covered that. Okay, good. Awesome. Hey, full disclosure uh, if you're planning on land, land people, if you're planning on an, attending the three o'clock, it's going to look very similar to this. So, um, I mean, I'm going to actually do a a condensed version of the differences between buying and selling land without obviously without all the, the perception from uh, house interested people. Right. Cool. Hey, thanks everybody. Thank Super you. appreciate it. We Yay. will be back uh, next week at two o'clock, yeah. not 11 o'clock, two o'clock Pacific time, yep. right between the advanced land call and the regular uh, land call. Yep. Thanks. We'll see you thanks. soon. Bye.